Howdy champs, my name is Mohit and people today I'm going to show you how to use the color transform uh, class in Flash and Action Script 3. In fact, before I dive deeper uh, and uh, go inside the Actions panel, explain the Action Script to you, explain the stage, the assets on the stage, etc. I would first like to show you a published preview by hitting Ctrl Enter on my keyboard to uh, render out the Swift, export the SWF file and test the movie. Okay. People, uh, you see the um, brush, the paint brush that I'm moving uh, is actually nothing but the uh, mouse pointer. Okay, and uh, these three will act like the color palettes, these roundish structures. Okay, I can click on uh, any of them and you can actually see the tip of the brush actually change according to the color that I've uh, selected. And uh, moreover, when I click on this uh, bigger white ball, uh, the color is then transferred over to this uh, big ball in the center okay so this was achieved uh, using the uh, color transform class in flash and action script 3 so in this project uh, project let's have a look how this was actually achieved cool so let me come off the published preview and uh, before I dive inside the actions panel I would first like to show you what's exactly there on the stage what's exactly there inside the library and what's there on the timeline okay the topmost layer as always uh, belongs to the action script let me open it up for you all right have a look out here we have around 30 lines of script which is not too lengthy seriously okay and uh, then the second layer from the top is the brush layer which is nothing but this brush that you see out here okay if I click on the brush, brush you can actually see the uh, instance name of the brush is brush. It's a movie clip and has the registration point left bottom. Now that's really important. The tip of the uh, brush that is. So left bottom. Okay. Uh, if I double click and go inside, again that brush is made up of two more movie clips. Uh, the handle which is this brownish structure and this blackish tip and I've called it the tip right cool so it's a, a bigger movie clip is the brush then we have the tip and the handle inside sub movie clips inside okay and uh, the third layer is the layer that contains these three color palettes so basically these these colors are the will act like the palettes you know they will transfer the color onto the brush tip which in turn uh, transfers the color onto this bigger white ball okay cool and uh, similarly this white ball which has a registration point top left which although is irrelevant uh, has an instance name of ball and is the bottommost layer uh, people make sure the brush layer is uh, immediately after the action 3 layer Okay, otherwise the brush will go and hide itself uh, under, uh, you know, the uh, color palettes. Cool. And these color palettes or these color dots, whatever you may want to call them are actually buttons. Okay. And they have been given instance names of uh, red, green and uh, blue respectively. Okay. Uh, you can have a look out here that I've actually... Uh, use the bevel filter on uh, all the three buttons if I double click on this uh, red button you can see it has the the over and the down state okay so in fact before I go inside the actions panel I would first like to draw out a button and show you exactly how this button was made okay so what I'm gonna do is uh, temporarily let me pull out a button okay let's say uh, this is the button uh, that I want to make something like this these three buttons let me show you how these three buttons were actually made okay so let me select the button and uh, have a look out here that the uh, let's say I, I select this uh, gradient give me a sec this gradient okay let's say I beg your pardon let's say I select like sometimes you know it's really difficult to select the gradient 
even though you may be uh, selecting it, it still doesn't appear. Okay, fine. So let's say I select this uh, reddish gradient, radial gradient that is. Then I'm going to hit the uh, gradient transform tool and then uh, let me just zoom in first. Let's zoom in at 400%. And then I'm going to click on this icon. I'm going to spread the um, gradient like so. Uh, I think this should be fine. Yep, let me zoom back. 100% once I'm uh, done with that let me right click let's say convert to a symbol a button symbol okay keeping the registration point top left let's say okay and then once it's a button symbol let me hit the selection tool let me select the uh, button okay and let me double click now since it's a button it will have over and down states too okay let me select the button let me right click this time let me say convert to symbol but this time I'm going to uh, convert it to a movie clip and say OK. The reason why I actually converted this to a movie clip was so that I could give it a bevel. So I'm going to apply the bevel filter from here at the bottom. OK. But at the same time, I'm going to make sure the distance is just 2. And not only the distance is 2, but the blur X and blur Y values are 2 as well. That's exactly what I did for these three buttons. Or these three color dots okay and then I'm gonna right click on the overstate I'm gonna say insert keyframe but here on the key you know the uh, over keyframe the overstate of the button I'm just gonna make sure that the distance is 3 okay and uh, which I've affected next I'm gonna go to down to the down state of the button I'm gonna insert a keyframe keyframe is as good as saying you know uh, copy the overstate to the down state but here on the in the down state I'm gonna make sure that the distance is actually minus two, which gives the appearance of it going inside. Okay, so you see it, it kind of looks uh, concave now. So if I go back, people, uh, and if I hit Control Enter now, let me show you. Now this button is quite like the other three uh, color buttons or the color dots that you see, and that's exactly what I did for these three buttons. So I use the uh, radial gradient and the bevel filters on all these three buttons and gave them instance names red uh, green and blue okay so now that I've shown you how did I actually construct these three color dots the color buttons or call them the color palette whatever you would like to call it I can get rid of it okay cool now uh, this brush movie clip is gonna replace the mouse pointer and once we are inside the access panel I'm gonna explain just that how did I actually replace the mouse pointer with this brush okay so all that is left for me to explain is the action script so let's dive inside the access panel people okay in line number one and two I've used the import directive to import the requisite class of the required classes the color transform class and the mouse events okay I've declared a variable I've given it a name brush color and data typed it to the color transform is equal to a new color transform so basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a color object or I'm creating a new instance of the color transform class so that I can use it obviously okay then brush color which is the variable through the color property I'm making it equal to white 0x ff 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 is the color white okay then to the brush dot tip and what's brush dot tip this is the brush and if I go inside by double clicking this blackish structure is the tip okay I'm changing the tip to the color white and how am I doing it let me show you what I'm saying is the br the tip of the brush so brush dot tip through the transform property and the color transform property I'm making it equal to the brush color brush color is nothing but the color white that is the reason upfront when I hit control enter let me show it to you once again you can see that the tip of the brush is white cool so it turns the tip of the color white the uh, tip of the brush white okay next people what I'm doing is I'm adding uh, you know event listeners to the green the blue and the red dots these three red green blue dots so when somebody clicks on any of these three uh, color dots of the color palettes I'm firing a function on click and let's examine the function on click it checks if event dot target is green so it checks if the you know the the 
the color dot the color palette pressed is green which is this if it is I am saving inside the uh, brush color variable through the color property the color green and uh, else if event dot target is red so if the color you know if the uh, dot pressed is red then uh, if it is red I would want the brush color dot color to be red a brush color is the variable that's holding the color people in line number four so I'm turning it red else I'm turning the brush color dot through the color property equal to blue 0066 CC is a blue shade okay at the same time the tip of the brush through the transform property and the color transform sub property I'm making it equal to the brush color the brush color is actually holding the color uh, green or uh, red or blue okay so the tip of the uh, the brush changes whenever I click on these three color dots let me show you by hitting control enter once again what I mean when I say that okay so you see when I click on the uh, green dot it turns green and turns red when I click on the red dot cool so that's that's understood okay next up people what I'm doing is I'm adding an event listener to the ball now the ball is this uh, big white ball I'm adding an event listener to it and I'm saying uh, if somebody clicks on the uh, white ball then I would want a function color change to execute or function uh, and the function color change uh, says that the ball using the transform property in the color transform property should be made equal to the brush color which is then either green or red or blue that is the reason when you click on the white ball it changes to either of the three colors very very simple okay in the next few lines uh, one two three four five lines six lines rather okay all we have is the routine through which we hide the mouse pointer so we have the mouse dot hide in build function the opposite function is mouse dot show that hides the default mouse pointer okay once that is done I'm adding an event listener to the stage the entire stage which is 550 by 400 and I'm saying when the mouse moves over the stage I would want a function called follow to fire and what that does is mm, what that does is it makes sure that the X and the Y of the brush now this is the brush <coughs> excuse me excuse me it's good should be made equal to the mouse X and the mouse Y which are actually hidden so the brush moves with the hidden mouse pointer that is the reason when you move the mouse you see the brush actually moving so this is uh, how you use the custom uh, cursor routine so this is the custom cursor function of the custom cursor routine and that is how the default mouse pointer gets hidden which is actually replaced by the brush uh, which which functions like the mouse pointer okay so people before I terminate the tutorial let me in the end show you a publish preview by hitting control enter and uh, you see up front it's white the tip of the brush is white then it changes color depending on uh, which color dot the color palette is clicked and then when I click on the uh, ball you can see that color change reflect there all right people uh, let me tell you this uh, flower file is available as a free download from my website http colon forward slash forward slash quality lessons dot net forward slash downloads one number one digit one okay so that's uh, some good news for you all right so people I hope to see you very soon once again please come and subscribe uh, to I'll see you soon you have a good day bye bye peace